are in listen-only mode. Good morning, everyone. Russell Wright, Matt DeCruz, NetworkEmpire.com, Certification Level 1, Online Business Technical Advantage, which is really all about building your keyword-rich money SEO silo site using website silo architecture and any other data sculpting and business sculpting techniques. That is Matt DeCruz's area of expertise. Uh, it's all about uh, making money. It's more than search engine optimization. We are teaching you how to build your business online from the perspective of a expert, uh, return on investment expert, which is Matt. I'd like to say good morning to everybody. I have been only sleeping for three hours. However, I'm feeling remarkably <laughs> healthy. And, ha and uh, let me just look and see who's uh, all coming in. It looks like we have most of the attendees here on the call. Uh, I'm sure that you are aware of why I am, uh, why I didn't sleep much last night. That is because we were preparing a final statement for both the public and basic members for the Skyfall update. And it looks like, as I looked at my inbox this morning, a variety of other emails have come in uh, from different markets and individuals now. So caught wind of it. So there it is. And if you, uh, some of you, I've already had questions. Uh, how does the update affect Tech Foundation 1? And the answer would be not at all. <laughs> there's, yeah. no, there's no relationship to anything that Matt has taught you. Uh, if anything, and again, this, I clarified this with the technical team, including Matt, there is no relationship at all. Uh, in fact, if anything, SEO silo architecture has just gotten fortified. And just when I thought it couldn't get any more fortified with the semantic web, it's now gotten more fortified and more useful uh, as long as you understand basic uh, structure. So good morning, everyone. Let's go ahead and look at, uh, can I please get a one if you are able to hear me? And if you're a one, if you're able to hear uh, two, if you're not, and a one, if you're able to hear Matt breathing heavily on the other line. <laughs> <laughs> and laughing. <laughs> uh, Lionel, I'd like to say good morning to you. Uh, Tim Edwards. Uh, Bill, good to see you. Kurt, also good to see you. Uh, Neil is also present. Tim Edwards, uh, thank you for the compliment. I really appreciate that. Matt works incredibly hard to... Uh, it's an amazing amount of presentation material that he's put together in this course. Brian Hassler, it's good to see you uh, this morning as well. I guess we had a little... Uh, shindig by putting together, I put, again, put together a wiki page on my break last night, the RSS stuff, that was kind of fun, using other people's stuff in Tech 2. Some of you are in Tech 2 while you're also taking this course. Now, this is probably the one week where it might get a little bit unusual for you because you're actually stepping down the volume quite a bit from advanced one feed to rule them all methods taught by everybody on our team to the basic startup and integration phases of the one feed to rule them all. Uh, that's okay. We are going to, it's an opportunity to, we are not going to uh, turn up the heat for you guys because there are people that are not taking the tech certification to uh, kickstarting massive traffic and conversion course and therefore it would be too advanced for them to get into some of the techniques that you already know. So you've got to shift, you've got to downshift and then maybe try to reintegrate some of the other things. Also, um, Matt and I use these coaching calls to update and integrate as you guys have already noticed Brian noticed uh, sometimes feed services that we use or recommend crap themselves and disappear that is because if you're not making money if they're not looking at your IT debt like the stuff that Matt's been talking about for years and you're not running your company like a business a little free RSS service that's a lead magnet doesn't really survive this is one of the reasons that I taught yesterday that the services I like to use I like to I'm always suspicious of a service is offering something for free uh, because uh, Matt and I both combined with our companies have dozens of servers uh, and somebody has to pay for all those. So one thing to think about that Matt gets into in other modules and I'm just going to go ahead and put that forward today after my conversation with Brian is, you know, if you've got a service out there and you've got your whole empire glued together with something that's free, make sure it's a large organization, uh, make sure it's getting that they have on-site developers, make sure you understand how they're paying for it more or less. And, um, you know, that's important. Right, Matt? <laughs> okay. So I'm going to go I ahead and... Myself. 
Oh, that's okay. So I'm going to let Matt jump right in. I'll be here to back it up. It looks like Brian is saying uh, a question. Uh, some services have literally no settings panel created, and then it's off and running with zero ability to edit. Yeah. Um, yeah, of course. And again, that's why you know we'll create statements on the wiki page, Brian. Um, the, the ultimate solution, why we're not concerned, you guys, about some of the one-feed RSS services that are more uh, splicing and dicing services, uh, is that we are incorporating all these into our technology. In other words, we are able to fund and pay for the way that things need to be. Uh, we have several, uh, we have an RSS feed, I'm looking right here, this on my spec in the office, which includes several of Sue's applications. It includes a rewrite of Matt's uh, any silo builder uh, and putting it all together. I've actually got the software framework used to create Yahoo Pipes. I've looked at that in the past. We are not going to write it on that, I don't think. So the point is, is that we look at things from a developmental perspective. And uh, if something doesn't work and it's not being well maintained, generally speaking, you don't want to use it everywhere in your empire unless you're ready if you've got a backup plan. And, uh, and in the end, if you're not a developer, if you are a developer, try building it yourself. That's, that's good advice. Yeah. Well. All right, Matt, I'm out of the way. Let's go right into the basic one feed. you got questions, I'm here. And thank you so much for being here, guys. I'll hit the question panel if you've got them. Just type them in. Thanks. Excellent. Yeah, guys, um, just to verify, uh, when I heard about Skyfall and the whole world was falling down, it, it reminded me of Asterix and Oblix. I don't know if you guys have ever read those comics when you were kids. <laughs> Dating myself here, yeah, but <laughs> the sky's falling and the whole world's going to end. So what I did is I went and looked at my rankings and tracking, and my rankings have actually improved. The, my impression rates have gone up, my visibility has increased, and a lot of the keywords that I was on pages four, five, and six on, they've actually moved up. So worth setting up your WR1 the way we're teaching you guys, nothing's really changed and it's actually done us a benefit rather than uh, uh, injustice. If if you've been doing dodgy things and messing around, you'll probably get a pinch, but uh, I, I tend to keep my stuff as simple as possible. I try to keep it as clean as possible and I only put links when I have to. I don't go out link building. I use promotions to actually drive my traffic. and the, Backlinks are always a byproduct of my actions rather than uh, my focus being on building backlinks. So with that said, um, let's just look at where we're at in this whole process. So we're on week six. Can you guys give me a one if you can hear me clearly? Let's just start with that first. Okay, cool. Okay, and two, um, is this visible? Can you guys actually see this uh, image nice and clearly? Give me one if you can. I'm going to throw this link into the chat window so you can actually open up on your local machine and just have a look at where we've gone so far. Okay, so last week when we spoke, uh, I took you through the recap of all the things we had done. Um, week six, this is typically where we got our blog up, okay? Um, guys, can you give me one if you've got your actual blog up, your test blog that you're doing for this, this course, uh, and two if you haven't yet. Um, like we said earlier, most of you guys are doing take two, so um, you guys have gone through quite a bit of advanced one feed training. Okay, um, if you haven't got your blog up, um, basically the general rule is when you set your blog up, what you want to do is you want to mirror the silos of your W1 money site. That's the most important part, okay? So in DWS, we create silos. Let me just actually open it up and I'll show you there what we've done. <clears throat> so I'm in a mini me light version, okay. Um, this is all going to get rebuilt, this whole version, this whole software suite is going to be much more powerful than what it currently is. So um, when you build a deep site where you've got silos, categories and supporting articles, uh, last week we actually did one of the things, so there we go, okay. Let me just zoom in here so we can see this nicely. Okay. So the hair is the silo. These are the categories within hair. And then under haircuts, we've got two supporting articles. Okay. And that gives us a four stack website structure. Okay. The index page being the first, that's the domain. Then we've got the silos, second stack. Third stack is the categories. And the four stacks are supporting articles. When you set up your blog for your WR1 site, okay, if 
just as a rule of thumb when you manually build it. If you've got silos, categories, and supporting articles, typically what you'll do with your blog is you'll mirror your silos, okay? So your blog will actually just have wedding, hair, and makeup, okay? Do you guys, do you guys uh, understand that part? With a blog, you want to keep things slightly broader because you're going to be speaking about different types of things as you're writing your blog post and you're promoting and syndicating. You can take it one step further and create a category. Actually, you know what? Let's keep it really simple. Guys, your blogs, what you want to do is you want to create your categories that mirror your silos. So in, in this case, my blog will have wedding, hair, and makeup. Then all the blog posts that I write will fall under the categories. So if I'm talking about weddings, all my blog posts will go under the wedding category. If I'm talking about hair, hair all my blog posts for hair will go under hair, and if you're speaking about makeup, everything will go under makeup. The reason why we're doing it like this is it broadens up the conversations and your posts have got space. You can actually put all your posts in one category within the blog post, okay, and then from there, that moves out. Now, in order to do the one feed setup, okay, you need to have one blog post, okay, you have to post your first post on your blog underneath one of the categories. Okay, can you give me a one if that's clear to you of what I said there, if you understand that? It's pretty simple, it's not complex at all. We're not doing a complex setup like we did with the silo structure on the actual money site. With the blog, it's a much more simple thing and we're actually broadcasting and we're using it as a blog. So we can have a blog row on the front page. So if we go to Network Empire's blog, you'll see what we've done there. Let's have a look at that quickly. Just this example. Okay, let's get the blog. Yeah, we're we're getting hammered right now. I mean, we're already got having server issues, but so the speed is a little of an issue right now. We have so much traffic on our site. That'll be forward slash blog. Yeah, I'm just waiting for it to load. We're busy getting an upgrade on our network, so uh, we've had a bit of slow days here. So I'm looking forward to a bit more bandwidth. It's slow on both. It's actually slow on both sides <laughs> right now because of the Skyfall update. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we need, yeah, we okay, need guys, to get so this uh, This has got the blog role, and as we run the blog post, as Russell promotes and syndicates and tells us stories, okay, we've got the image, we've got the headline, we've got the introduction, and then they drop down and they read into it. So if we look at this URL, I'm going to click into this ad here, yeah. sorry, this article. What you'll see is that this falls under the SEO category, okay? So this blog post goes under the SEO. Okay, so when we look at the URL, spentalkempire.com forward slash SEO forward slash the post title, okay? So this is all you're essentially doing. So when you write this article and you press submit, What's going to happen is, if you've got Social Explosion installed, Social Explosion is going to grab that, boom, blast it across the web. When we set up the basic one feed system, that's going to take it and it's going to push it to our WRS properties. Okay, so let's have a look at what's going on there. So we write our first post, we make sure that our site is indexable and it's not turned off, okay. We then set up the one feed and then we add our, another silo as we move later on through our process. Now, when we do our blog post, the RSS is going to actually work because we set up our first post over here. You need to have a post, one post at a minimum on your blog to activate the RSS feed. Um, so guys, are you clear on that, on, on what, why we have to create one post first before we set up the one feed system? If we don't set up the one post, we won't get the RSS feed, and then we can't move on. Um, just give me a two if you don't get that. Yes, Some and uh, come back to me and they say, "Yeah, um, I can't find the feed." It's because you haven't written, the, actually created the post. Yeah, and uh, another thing we're thinking about is just so you guys know, that's the reason that we really call it broadcasting, because it's not automated at the top levels in WR1. You, you know, nothing out, then no traffic in. So it's really up to you to set your broadcasting schedule. I like to look at it from a broadcasting perspective, like a transponder, because there's no 
if you don't if you're not putting out any signals if you're not communicating value if you're not uh, uh, creating content then nothing is hitting downstream yeah. like somebody has a question for you uh, Matt when you set up a blog, are you just setting up your category, subcategories, and permalink with category post name but no pages and call it a silo? Or do you do more structure with pages like with money site too? Well, our particular case, uh, unfortunately, with Network Empire is one you probably should not look at. <laughs> the reason... Uh, no, uh, it's Russell, it's, it's right what you're saying there. Yeah, that's, that, that, is is that is what we do. That is what we do, yeah. I'm just pointing out that it is forward slash blog in this case, in other words, the blog, so it's going to, but the permalink structure will still work in the, in the folder that we have it. I'm just saying that in this particular setup, we weren't able to create independent domains and we really aren't able to silo the blog because well, we can pseudo silo the blog, but it's not, if you guys are looking for a hardcore silo structure, just know that it's imperfect because of the way that we use do, a digital access pass members area. We were not we have a coder looking at the possibility of properly siloing it, but it's semi-siloed, so it's close enough. But yeah, Brian, that's yeah. that's um, how you would use it. Yeah, in our framework, guys, you'd have a subdomain, blog.domainer.com, and it'll be basically forward slash your silo, which is will be a category, and then your post will fall underneath that. Um, yeah, and he's... With, um, with Network Empire, we've got a members area connected to it, and it, it creates a bit more compli yeah, yeah, complicated... Yeah, right, exactly, Matt. It's, it's complex, Brian, and therefore we do not use the vSilo plugin model. And so that's always been a little bit weird, you know, so it's like do as we say, but not as we do. This is one of the few cases of that. Um, but some of the sites were made before WordPress was easily siloable. And I'll be honest, like back in the day when some of these old, old blogs were created, I was pretty lazy and didn't and, and was too busy building software to fix this problem. So, you know, it is being moved over uh, slowly but surely. And uh, but that should answer your question. So there's no pages on the blog. We just went ahead and decided to create a blog, uh, a video or a, um, a broadcast role on the blog. And, and we have a little bit of an advantage because we are driving a lot of traffic. So the pages are doing really well. Um, so that should answer your question, but it's imperfect in terms of silo structure for now. Yeah, but we're revamping this whole, the whole, the whole front end of Twitter Empire is actually going to get changed. We're yeah, we're new, working on that now. Feel, yep. We're actually breaking the whole thing apart and rebuilding it so it works better. Yeah. Okay. Right, so here's the structure, guys, um, of the process that we're going to go through. Now, for, for Tech One, we, we take you through the basic one feed system and this is specifically for the guys who are not familiar with RSS or have never used RSS before and we don't want to overwhelm you and overcomplicate the whole process by giving you the whole advanced one feed system. So what we're doing here is giving you a few components to work with on your blog and we're going to basically just start off with using our YouTube feed and we're going to take our blog feed, okay? Then what we can do is the option is we can take this YouTube and the blog feed and we can actually push them through Yahoo Pipes and create a third feed, okay? So when we look at this, you got the link here. Now where I got this image was from the course material at the bottom here. We've outlined it. There's a video explaining exactly how to go about getting the one feed set up. So we actually take you through the exact process. But it's on setting up the OneFeed automation system on week six. This is where you'll see the image. Uh, we've got a video for setting up Twitter feed. We've got a video showing you how to use Yahoo Pipes. So there is a lot of material that I'm not going to go over again. I will rather just talk you through the ideas and the concepts as we look at this and, and the process. Okay. So we've got blog.domainname.com. We created our category, which mirrors the silo on our WR1. We've created our one post to activate the feed. And when we're ready and we've actually themed our site and set it all up and we have to start promoting and start broadcasting our signals upstream, this is when we can actually start taking our videos, putting them in the YouTube channel, taking our post, embedding that video into our blog post, writing our post, publishing it. And then what happens is that's then going to um, have that RSS feed sitting with our our, um, our post material. Okay, so we can go to Yahoo, push it through there, and in this example, we're showing you that you can use um, the feed directories. You can use only wire, 
you can use Twitter feed. Now these are just examples of how we're using different third party properties and platforms. There's lots of them out there. So some guys like using Hootsuite, other guys like using FeedBurner. There's multiple setups. But the general concept that we're showing you here is when you use Twitter feed as an example, that thing can push it to, to your WRS Twitter account, your WRS Facebook account, and if you're using LinkedIn, you can even push information to LinkedIn. Okay. So when you're thinking about your promotions and when you're setting up your one feed, just always think about ahead. Okay, right, I'm writing this blog post. How is this information going to flow upstream to the audiences that are interested in what we've got to say? Okay. And that's what you must always keep in mind when you see up the one feed. How are we going to push upstream and where is the message going to get displayed? Okay, where's the broadcast going to actually end up? Now you can see over here, when we use um, the, the feed directories and the feed search engines, there's roughly about, there's lots of them, there's many that we can use. We can push the mashup through that one. We can then go to OnlyWire and we can push our blog feed through OnlyWire if we want to use that as an example. OnlyWire submits to over 50 networks and we can get our message out on all those other places. We can use Twitter feed, go to our social properties. And what happens is this creates traffic, but we also get a backlink, which is a byproduct. And on those backlinks that come back to the original post that we posted to, that then brings people back to our blog, which then leads them back to our W on Money site. Okay. Now, on all these points, if you're doing lead generation, you can have your lead calls over here. You can capture the leads over here. You can capture the leads on your W1 site, and you can capture leads on your Twitter account, Facebook, LinkedIn. Now, on Twitter, it's usually an image or text, but you can also lead guys to a leading page if you are doing lead generation. On Facebook, you can have a call to action right there with a little post that you're doing in an image, leading the guys back into your primary blog, and on that, you'll have your form to capture that lead as well, or the product that you're selling. Okay, so the, the process is pretty simple. The recommendation for your basic one feed is have your YouTube channel. Okay, video is very important. It creates a lot of engagement and it gives your time on site a major boost. Okay, some clients don't want to do videos. They're a bit shy. Uh, I battled nearly for a year to get my wife to do videos. <laughs> and she's, a, she's on Facebook all the time. They're posting, posting, posting. They're putting up images. They're doing a great job, but they're just not using video yet. So it depends on how your client works. Okay, some of your clients might not want to use a blog, they just want to use Facebook. I'm busy working on a process to actually pull the information from Facebook and then to push it back into the blog. Uh, I've almost got it working, so when I've got that done, I will update the material and I will release a video showing you how to do that. Um, but for now, this is the basic concepts that we're working with. Um, I want to ask you a few questions, actually we've got a whole bunch of questions rolling in. Uh, Brian's saying Twitter feed has got uh, issues with, with uh, Twitter feed. Um, okay. Um, guys, what questions do you guys actually have with regards to step one feed? Um, actually, give me one if you actually set this up already and um, you tested it and you posted and you've seen your communications landing on your uh, properties. Yeah. Uh, uh, Mac, let me just interject uh, speaking to Brian. Sure. Twitter feed is not a problem. It's been a stable service or remains a st stable service. Where it's a problem, problem Brian? is when you've got 5,000 pages a day being published across your WR2 network, which is beyond the scope of this course. That's really like for certification level three. Um, what I hate about it is if I have so many websites now across so many servers that there's no possible way I can manage them personally. So Twitter feed doesn't have any error messages when the Facebook, when you're publishing to Facebook page, there's a one-to-one -one relationship to our Facebook pages and the WR2 sites, which is, again, beyond the scope of this course. What happens is Facebook now has tossing up tokens. Twitter will last quite a long time, but Twitter has started doing this as well. And if you think about it, it just makes sense. If you've got a lot of automation happening out there and courses like this coming on the market like Reteach, the idea is to keep things rolling. And these are free services, right? This is related to what we talked about this morning when we, when we launched. Well, what happens is they just go back and ping and, and send an email, just, you know, are there real human beings still here or is the person who set up this one feed dead and it's still communicating throughout the network? Well, that costs them money and time. So the tokens and the app tokens for Facebook is especially a bad one, dies, and you have to log back in manually and reconnect to that app token. And Twitter feed requires that as a free service. 
and Twitter doesn't do it in the same way, but they also die. Now, I don't have, I love Twitter feed in terms of WR1 because a lot of the times I'll be, you know, if, if the client is managing their own Facebook page or their LinkedIn or their Twitter page for, on the level that Matt is talking about, they're probably going to notice that they're not getting automatic tweets. But still, it's that unsettling feeling when you're dealing, you know, like, why is it, you know, why is it, like, Brian, like uh, Matt's wife, you know, if she's noticed that Matt has been, that things have been automatically publishing, she may or may not notice until a few days later of that things are not auto-posting to her Facebook page, and she might come to Matt and bug him and say, like, why is this not automatically posting anymore? And but the problem with that is when you've got 100 clients or 30 clients, you would rather have it not break if at all possible. Or send, and so there's, Twitter feed really does stop after about two months. You're going to have to log back into the app and make sure that's working. That's the only problem with it. Other than that, uh, let me just speak to this, Matt. Um, other than that, Twitter feed is really awesome because it's the only RSS automator into Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn that I know that has a GUID function inside the control panel. A GUID function means that it will go down to the bottom of your RSS feed and start posting things that are not in the right order, that are not necessarily uh, at the top of the feed. And that's pretty rare for feed systems. So, the, so it has advantages and disadvantages. Hopefully that makes sense, guys. It's not broken. It just needs you to go in and verify after about two months. And for, for automated systems, it's not my favorite. Cool. Uh, Hootsuite, yes, Hootsuite, Hootsuite, for instance, will not do that. It's paid. You know, it's three dollars, it's six dollars a month, and I've been running. And this is a fact. I, Matt, I don't even know if I told you this. I've been running a Google Plus page, automated automatically through a Pinvid site, two biz pages for a year and a half without a single break in the RSS through Hootsuite. Yeah, we we spoke about it when I was in the Phoenix with you. We went through it. Okay, but this cool. is what Russell's saying. Um, paid services tend to deliver a better, consistent quality. Um, we we just give you guys the basic things here. Like for example, with the WR ones, guys, always remember this is the core business. This is the real world business. This is this is where the guys are. It's brick and mortar. This is they're doing services. They're selling products. The guys are trading. This is why we're building WR ones because we we need to take what they're doing in the real world and push it into the digital world. Yeah, and there's to reflect that. There's nothing on this map that we that doesn't work, guys. Uh, what it, Brian is in the advanced core, so he's bringing back stuff that we said at the advanced level. When we get into the, when we get into WR3, and I'm sure that we'll have Matt on there as a guest speaker as well in one of the week modules, um, you're not going to want to use Twitter feed at that level. So if I cause anyone any confusion about this, this map that's laid out here uh, is completely fine. We're giving you a, a roadmap to possible massive domain authority and page authority stacking that's still safe even with the Skyfall update and the basic kickstarting of how you could get your broadcast network automated. Yeah, because remember guys, these are components that we're using. So Twitter feed might close business, then all we do is we switch it out. We take that component out, we switch it out, we put nothing. So if you want to use Hootsuite, you can put Hootsuite in there. It's totally up to you how you want to set this up. This is just a basic framework demonstrating components that we're using in the WR1, WS1 connections for basic. Oh yeah, and, and Matt, another thing with the exception of Snap, everything on this is free. So we wanted you guys to know that uh, we wanted to help, Matt wanted to help you guys set this up with no cost. And this yeah. all where only wire would be, only wire and snap I guess would be an exception. There is a free version of only wire, so we just tried to put, you know, everything in here at zero cost before we before you got to level two certification where you can start buying stuff. <laughs> yeah, cool. So guys, um, uh, let me just get my thoughts back together again. Yeah, so this is a very basic setup. We're using two or three components. We're taking the YouTube, the blog feed. We're feeding them into these components. Now, one thing you don't want to do when you're working with components like only one awareness example or Twitter feed as an example is you don't want to have the two components po uh, posting back to the same WROS. So, for example, what I mean is, you, as you notice, let's just say only wire was posting to Facebook. You don't want to select Facebook in only wire and Twitter feed because you're going to get duplication. 
you're going to get the same message posted twice on your actual walls. Okay, so this is one thing you need to think about when you setting up your one feed. This is why I draw out these schemas, these these roadmaps, because it's almost like a circuit board. We can see how the connection is flowing, and we can also watch how the communications are going to actually move and where the communication is going to link back to. When we draw out our map like this, it makes it very clear, and the connections become very clear, and everything's defined. We can actually see the circuits are flowing nicely, and it's nice and clean. So this is what you want to do when you're setting up your one feed, is you want to have your roadmap. This is what I drew it for you. And then from this, you want to sort of expand and start tweaking and thinking about, okay, cool. I'm going to use this service to push my information to Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter. You might not even use LinkedIn, but these are... Com these are options you can select within that component that we're using. Okay, so <clears throat> what happens here is we, we introduce Snap. This is a paid plugin, but th this is one of the plugins that pushes to Pinterest and it pushes to Google Plus. And depending on things um, being updated, sometimes Snap goes down and then it's back up again when they actually update it. Um, Russell, what's your thoughts on Snap? You've used it quite extensively. Nope, never used it once. Snap is not my Snap is not my creature. It is, yeah, Suze. Um, it works really, it it works really well, and I confirmed this because somebody else asked me, and I couldn't honestly speak to it. I checked yesterday with a certified advisor. It's now once again effectively posting to Google Plus and to Pinterest, making it the only uh, software in the world that I know of that publishes the Google Plus personal. Uh, Pinterest. There's only one other software in the world that I know publishes to Pinterest, and that is Social Explosion, ours. Um, so those are the two that you can use that are plugins based. But it's working again. There, yeah, it, it wasn't working for a while, and now it's back up again. Excellent. Now, Social Explosion is not a one-feed type of system, and I can take RSS feeds, but uh, at the time when we designed this map, we never had Social Explosion in because it couldn't take a feed in. It just promoted and pushed out your post. But um, Russell, what's, what would you like to say about Social Explosion here in, in view of what these guys are doing? Because I'm assuming that most of the guys are actually using the service. Uh, you mean the guys in, in this training? Yes. I don't know if any of these guys, I don't know which guys are using the, tr the social explosion. I guess give me a one if you are using social explosion, two if you're not. It's fine either way. This is not a sales platform. There's ways to not use social explosion and do just fine if you're on a budget. So, um, Okay. Well, social explosion also has a function that allows you to publish each blog post in a broadcast directly to uh, our bookmarking service as well, which is... Uh, not just Google, not, we do not have Google Plus, like Snap does. Uh, it's just too much of a nightmare to program in the way that we're doing it, at least for now. Uh, we do not have Facebook. We publish to Pinterest and Twitter, which give you the biggest bang backlink. We also publish to um, several other bookmark services. And since my coffee is still setting in, I don't even have that list up. It's on, it's on the help file. Uh, so that you can add your automatic syndication. The difference between what you're doing here, I mean, we do have the, the, you can add your own accounts as the secondary function of social explosion, but that's not what it was created. Currently, our network, our social signal exchange network is literally growing to thousands of users. And soon enough, we'll be able to invite Network Empire uh, students into the network with accounts if they have it, so they can, you know, join the social signals exchange network. The difference is it's plug and play. We automatically syndicate for your domain authority stacking uh, to literally thousands of users. Uh, within the social networks and bookmarking networks. And so it's a little bit different than syndicating uh, your own stuff to your own platforms that you have to set up. Okay, the users own the accounts. And so that's uh, a entirely different perspective. I can't really say that it's a syndication module. Uh, in other words, it's not part of your network. It's part of a, a network that's expanded beyond yours. And that's why it doesn't fall directly into the one feed setup. But it is still automated power and it's automated juice. Okay. Um, somebody's asking, can you use Social Explosion along? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, this to is the top of side. Yeah, to be honest, I guess where the challenges we have with Social Explosion is it's so powerful. Uh, it's like a machine gun operation, and people's eyes are bigger than their stomach, and they turn everything on full bore, and then whatever tokens they purchase, they're gone in like, you know, four days. So you need to be careful. if you're. It's really actually optimal for the WR1 method that Matt is teaching you, because you don't tend to publish 
thousands of videos, say, on a video cracking site. I mean, you can blow through the, our enterprise package to $750 a month. You can blow through that on a, pin, on a couple of pin bid sites in just a, a couple of weeks so or even less. So you just have to be careful. And we are creating for you guys a social explosion uh, signals calculator. And what that will allow you to do is to be able to determine what you actually need based on the number of posts so you can control a little bit more of what's happening. But social ex uh, explosion is 100% safe on your WR1 or your money sites. It was designed for that. You're only sending social signals from accounts. And it's, uh, it has done crazy things for us. For example, we have had manual penalties lifted simply by installing social explosion. This is a fact, guys. I'm not... Like I, no, I, can, I couldn't believe it. It's, like, it's just, it, it, if I knew that, and this speaks to the Skyfall update as well, if I knew that social signals were that powerful, I would have started really getting on the soapbox even more a year ago. <laughs> I mean, so that's, we know that's what Google's doing. We know that there's a relationship there to social signals. It just makes sense. And that's a little bit about social explosion as a great secondary. You can use the secondary function of social explosion for your own platforms, which is nice. It works well. And it does function if you want to add that extra kick for your own, your own personal bookmark service that you've opened up. You can use that as well as the expanded bookmarking network. Okay. So the reason why I introduced Social Explosion to the story of the one feed was I just wanted to give a bit of contrast here to, to what we're doing with this setup. Okay. So this is a basic setup. But it's also very, very powerful because it's taking YouTube videos and it's pushing it out across various platforms. It's taking your blog post and it's pushing it out. This is what one feed's doing. Okay, and that's getting pushed into LinkedIn, into Facebook, into Twitter. If you select those, if you're using Snap, that goes to Printers and Google Plus. With Social Explosion, Social Explosion. If you don't use Snap, the Social Explosion can take it and push it to Pinterest. This is what I was just saying to you guys. Um, <clears throat> and you also get all that third party, which is not your properties. There's no footprints that are associated to your WR1, to your name, to your brand. They are not connected to your WR1 setup. So social exploration pushes that broadcast out on all these other people's platforms. And that social interaction comes back with traffic and people. And the crazy thing about this, when you use the two side by side, is it gives you a lot of activity through your site. So like Russell said, with one of those things being lifted out of the penalty, they penalized the one site, we just left it, let it run. Within 90 days, they actually put that site back in the index because they saw that there's traffic and there's interaction. And Sue was actually getting a list built, being out of Google's index. And they saw this, and they, they just sucked it right back in. So it was very interesting seeing that. And I was like, wow. It was actually quite a good laugh. But um, guys. When you set up your one feed, a few things you want to think about. One, you want to make sure that you are clear on where the post is going and through what channel it's going to get there. The second thing is, um, with the WR1s, like Russ said, we're not doing multiple posts. We're actually communicating through a business. So you're going to see it's going to be like one or two or maybe three or four posts a day that are going out or a week that are going out for these type of businesses. And that is sufficient for this one feed setup. So if there's a lot of local businesses, you're doing a lot of local trade, these one feed setups, they're pretty easy to get set up and it gives the guys quite a bit of reach when they actually start utilizing it. And when they start seeing the signals coming back, the traffic coming back and they actually watch their rankings rising, you'll find that the guys will tend to start to write probably a bit more blog posts because there's, there's social proof. There's, um, there's proof that it's actually working. Okay, so um, we half you guys to set it up, the other two haven't set it up. Okay, that's fine. Um, guys, the one feed to set it up is you set up once and it's done. Okay? And then like we spoke about earlier on, if something gets turned off, it's just maintenance. This this goes with the terrain. If something gets turned on, when you're actually reviewing your sites, when you're doing your audits on your, your sites and your networks, and you see something's not working, you go in, you turn it back on, you fix it, and the wheel starts turning again. Um, I was writing some notes down today when I was actually just doing some, some review work on stuff and the one thing that came to mind, um, like when we build systems, everything fails all the time, okay? And when we design systems, we have to design systems with failure in mind. And I just wanted to show you guys a few things that have happened, just me, me playing around with a simple one feed. Okay, you can see on just a few of the keywords, a few of the branded keywords, how they plant. They've just been moving from, they came into the index in the 60s and 80s and they've just shot up. 
Okay, you can see the impressions are coming in, uh, all the information's there. And these are all the hair salon keywords. This has gone down slightly, but hairstylist Port Elizabeth, we've been moving up consistently. Now, on the SASE side, I've been doing a case study on the site to see what exactly works effectively. And um, I've been doing no, no backlinks. I've done no domain authority stacking. I've just shown you what, I've just done what I've done here in the WR1. We set it up, we siloed it, we put our copy in, we've got the site live, and we've not optimized the site much. We're waiting for Sarah to decide on designs, and, and we were talking to graphic designers and all that kind of stuff. But in the time that the site's been live, most of the keywords have actually shifted into positions 1 to 10. The bigger keywords, like hairstylist, okay, hair salon, we see a position 23 with no backlinks. Now, this is a, a vertical keyword that's defining a market. Hair salon is right at the top of the vertical, and we're sitting at position number 21 with zero backlinks, just using what I'm showing you guys. Okay, so what's great about what we're learning here is you, you can actually build people's sites, set up the site structure, and go through the processes that we've done over the last six weeks, and you can save a lot of money without building backlinks. Forget about building backlinks. Backlinks are rubbish. Don't worry about building backlinks. A backlink is always a byproduct of the promotion, okay? The one feed system takes your promotion and pushes it upstream out across the web, and the reach is up to you. You can introduce multiple properties. Like some, some feed directories, you push your feeds into them, and you push your posts through that, other companies, you're scraping those feeds, pull that up, they pick it up, and they link back to you. Sometimes it's good, sometimes you get a few bad ones. You just disavow the bad ones that you don't want. You just throw them out, but you keep the rest. Now, it's been very interesting that what we've been teaching the guys for the last, geez, Russell, how long have you guys been on the silo structure? It's like seven years now you've been speaking about this? Yeah, since, two, uh, since I learned it from Bruce Clay in 2005. Yeah, so since 2005, these principles have stuck, they've worked, and they've outranked people time and time and time again. Every time I build a site, and I just use DWS, and I build the silo structures, map it out, apply the persuasion like Russell says, put a copy in, we get the site lives, the sites jump, and they stick. Okay. Now, with the blog, the difference between the blog and the, the WR Money site is, the WR Money site is pages. We're building it with pages, so it sits. Okay, with the blog, you gotta keep on promoting because after a while, if you're not getting enough attention on an actual blog post, it'll fall off the rankings and it starts slowing down. Okay, so that's where social explosion is also pretty good because it gives that whole page a nice boost and it gives a lot of domain authority throughout your whole site, which then flows from the blog because it's on a subdomain to your primary money site, which is sitting in the dub 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 domain. Okay. Um, are you guys clear on this? Can you give me a one if you're clear on, on, on what I'm, I'm explaining to you guys and the benefits of doing what we're doing? Um, or two, if you're not clear on the blog setup with the one feed and all that kind of stuff? Okay, everyone's clear. That's cool. Guys, it's not complicated. It's, it's actually quite simple. And when I map this out for you guys, um, I like building websites that are very focused, very small, and I like to keep everything very clean because I like to get ranked for the keywords that are important with as little work as possible. I don't like building massive sites unless they're automated. Pinvids are an automated thing. It's great. We can build huge, huge websites. But when it comes to our ones, we're when to building focused and small because then they slip through all the penalties, they slip through all the radars, everything is focused, and you don't have all the hassles. Yeah. What you have if you try and build big things. Now, I would like to add that it's, um, it's Matt just said it's not complicated, and he's right, uh, but it's also not trivial. So when you're, when you're first starting out, and I know it can seem like there's a lot of different things to do, so let me give you a little bit of a mindset uh, pattern. What you're really, the, the thing that I want, the mindset that's helpful to be in when you're doing this is a broadcast mindset. In other words, think about, before you even think about the blog, think about creating a movie or a video or a message or a story. Think about it, instead of getting wrapped around the axle with technical 
details and, oh my God, this, and is this going to break and is this going to work? That stuff will work itself out by doing our training in the Skype. The hardest part, which we cannot do for you, is to tell your story. So if you had a gun to your head and you had to communicate your distinction and all the other things we've taught you, the painkiller article marketing, the persuasion, uh, the amazingness, if you have any, and if you don't, God help you, uh, you have to have distinction and a why and something that people want and painkiller. Otherwise, nothing that we teach you is really that helpful except in terms of, unless you're a hardcore SEO or, or a search engine ranking gamer. Okay? There's nothing wrong with that. But I'm just saying that if you've got a WR1 product, it's about money making. You've got to have distinction. And if you have distinction, you have a story. Just remember, our philosophy is that machines are there to help you tell your story. The, the story is not about the machines. And a lot of the time, uh, in our organization, because we're highly technical, we have a, a long history. Our story really is about machines, right? <laughs> so we have, a, we have a lot of things. But now most of the people that are building WR1s, unless you're writing software, unless you're teaching highly complex security, these types of things, for the most part, you're selling something or solving a problem in the real world. And if you're not, uh, even if you're not, you still have a story. How do you broadcast that story? I have seen some pretty amazing statistics where somebody just sits down. Uh, I can give you this with actual real clients. A lady just sits down with a home camera or Kodak 178 and sits there and uh, not even a really good video, just talking about why she's selling this particular uh, product. And she has a YouTube video and she puts it on her blog post. And she just tries like maybe a half of these things. But because she's got a video on there, because she's got a basic backlink, because she's in a broadcasting mindset that is a communication mindset, she's talking to humans, even if she gets half of the things wrong on this list that Matt has just shown you in the basic setup, she gets more reach, she gets more links back to the site, she gets more social interaction, she gets more phone calls, and ultimately at the end of the day she gets more sales. Why? Why did that happen? Like somebody just, everybody just type in your opinion here, like why? Why would she not only get more technical uh, reach, but also more broadcasting reach by the by that mindset? Give me some interaction here. I, I really want you to say it without me like feeding it to you. Like what's happening there? Yeah, this is important. Exactly. Can, everybody, I want everybody. Brian says, message and passion get across. Uh, Tim Edwards, can you uh, type something in there? Bill is doing something. She told her story. Right. Okay. So. Let's get some other people. She's broadcasting a personal message, right? Tim Tim Edwards says she's broadcasting a personal message. So, anybody else? Kurt? Okay, that's good. But you guys get the point. It seems like I'm being whatever facetious about this. I'm really literally not. For a moment, when you're when you're learning a technical, a hardcore technical environment, you haven't been it for years. What I find is that business owners in general forget the most important ingredient as they look for search engine and automatic magic and inbound links and all this. This is why we created Social Explosion. I don't want you to have to think about it. I want you to have the feeling when you're sitting in front of that camera that there's going to be 10,000 social signals and backlinks and traffic coming to that video. It's a, it's, it actually, in fact, knowing that that is there can actually help you do video, better videos. It's a very strange thing. This is another thing in business. Uh, I've actually worked with clients, I and mean, I've had to walk in their office and help them create a video or do a video. And I said, oh, by the way, um, there's going to be probably 3,000 visitors and a lot of reach, and you're going to be ranked for this. And so there's a lot of people that are going to see this. You know, <laughs> and it can have a weird effect. Sometimes they're like, oh, my, you know, for the first time it hits them that we really know what we're talking about. We know how to build traffic. We know how to build their social network. We know how to broad give them broadcast reach. And it changes everything. They start combing their hair. They clean up the room. <laughs> they, you know, roll out the red carpet. They go, oh, my God. Isn't that weird, though? Think about that for a second. You just shifted their mindset from, oh, I'm going to get ranked on the search engines, and maybe someday I'll be ranked for this keyword. And like, no, you're going to be seen in 10 minutes after this video is done. I'm uploading it, and there's going to be traffic. And they're like, whoa, you know, it gets them in that mindset. I want you guys to know where we are going. Uh, Skyfall is only the beginning of the, re of the HTML5 and the broadcast web. We're about five years ahead. We were, t we were eight years ahead in, so in website silo architecture. We thought that SEO silo architecture was only four years ahead. It was nine years. It was eight to nine. Okay. Um, Mike Long and, and the rest of the masses began to understand what it was literally at the beginning of this year. We consider that the, the common masses. So what we're talking about now, broadcasting, it's already started. 
this is here now. We are setting you guys up to be in a position of understanding that mindset so that these types of broadcasting syndication networks will just be plug and play for you. And you can get down to the business of the most important thing, in my opinion, which is expressing your beliefs, your passion, your brand, and your why, your purpose. Ultimately, uh, I'm going to let you guys in on a little secret. The entire organization, the one web ring, socially activated, semantically integrated, perpetual downstream, uh, domain authority stacking, and traffic system, is, was created when Sue and I got together in 2005 and decided what would be the most amazing thing we could ever do. And that was create a, a broadcasting network, not just a channel like YouTube is doing for every human being on Earth, but what if we could teach every human to reach as many people as they dared with their message? That's cool. Individually. Okay, so that's really where we're coming from. That, so in light of that, looking at Matt's amazing map here, remember not to get wrapped around the axle with technical. And he's right. It's not complicated, but it's also not trivial. And a lot of the times, making sure that you have our previous weeks in tech, uh, in other words, the reason that Matt and I taught you know, the painkiller article method, the distinction, the questions behind the questions, the pain behind the pain, is so that you can position your message of inspiration in a position of power and broadcast that everywhere and get and then what will happen is along with the machine world that we are, we're teaching how to set up right you'll get all the attraction based marketing I mean look at Matt's wife's business I mean it's all attraction based marketing I mean she's pretty much does she even have any room for more bookings Matt like at this point no they actually can't cope um, they yeah. <laughs> the, 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 the problem that Sarah's having with her business is she she's battling to find stylists correct because, um, yeah they can't. They can't take any more bookings. They book full for weddings till February next year. Exactly. Um, yeah. But the, the thing that makes Sarah so good is uh -huh. she understands that people buy from people. Correct. And that's all the, we're doing is we're connecting things with, with the technical. But that's the, right. The that's right. The message. And it's important also that when you know Sarah's issue, and unfortunately she's married to Matt in terms of business operations and the rest, and he helps her a ton with that. You'll find a lot of sno a small business owners when applying the things that we teach, they need then they need to learn business operations. In fact, in, in day six of the live certification event, I spend almost, some of you on this call are probably there, uh, Matt and I spend almost three hours auditing people's marketing operations, financial, and legal departments to integrate. But that's business operations. This is not technical web. So part of the reason that Network Empire and ThemeZoom includes the whole online business infrastructure is what you guys are learning here is really only half the battle. It's really once you have the business running, then you got to driving tons of traffic and getting leads through the door is a major problem. I'm not saying it's not, but I'm saying that it, you're going to get good enough at this where you're going to, like Matt and I are, where you can crush the business owner with too much of what they thought they wanted. And they've got a whole different set of problems, which is too much business. <laughs> We're not enough product. So that's the, it's your job to get, you know, that role in and, at that point, then they, they have a different kind of mentoring that they need, which we also offer, which is just business when, management. Yeah, when they phone you and say, turn it off, and you say, you can't. That's, that's, <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> that, that's a good problem to have. <laughs> well, interestingly, Matt, Kurt is asking a decent question. What is the recommended frequency of publish? And is that different for local business versus non-local? Kurt, this is the most challenge. There's no possible way for us to answer that because the variables are so Intense. Now, Matt uh, probably can give you a good idea what he does for a hair salon, so that maybe you can extrapolate. Do you know what? Do you know what I said to Sarah? I said, "Tell your story every day on Facebook." Yeah. She's comfortable with that platform. Um, yeah. This is why we we're still playing around with the blog, and I'm looking for a way to harvest what she publishes on Facebook to push it through the blog, to push it through the one feed. And I've almost cracked that code. Um, but uh, what they're doing is through Facebook because of their market this as females as visual and most ladies are on the phones they, 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 their thumbs are going all day long Sarah's posting and she's interacting and talking all the time and that's working for their business that's yep. what they got they're using Facebook and they're yep. pushing people that way through yes stuff. and to answer that question Kurt uh, for Network Empire the answer is it depends uh, it depends on the size of your list the growth rate and there's something called frequency of publish. We talked about the impact equation and certification level two, uh, which Chris Brogan is, it's a really brilliant model of communication. Where if you, when you move into uh, certification level two, we'll talk more about the impact equation. And it's an important understanding because one of the aspects of the impact equation is engagement. 
okay and and so and the number the locate the amount of daily uh, I'm sorry the amount of weekly posting is going to be dependent upon your audience so what is that little sweet spot where people are hearing from you too much I mean I had an email several years back from somebody who said I stopped you I got worried about you guys because I hadn't heard an email from you in three weeks and I was really concerned about whether your business was stable I was like wow is that if that's coming from one person then probably other people have it. Wow! Now, if they're getting a signal, it's the absence of a signal that sometimes makes people nervous. So you're going to have to find the little sweet spot for yourself, and you can also survey and get a sense of what's too much. I have been criticized for too much email to, out to people, and I've been—I mean, posting out to people—and I've been criticized for not enough. And then when you start getting multiple lists, you got to juggle things and be careful. I know that some of you have gotten too much email from me from multiple accounts, so. That's when you get into advanced merging of systems. So you really must begin to look at what is the communication frequency. If you have something you want, <clears throat> I'm a big believer, you guys, in the storytelling as becoming the voice of reason. Okay, like for example, right now in the Skype room as we're doing this course, uh, because of this recent major security breach called Shellshock that's come out from servers nationwide, it's bigger than Heartblade. Some of the guys in our in our Skype group are talking about the conspiracy theories by the NSA to shut off our water and down the rabbit hole everyone goes, right? Well, the voice of reason is to counter that with reason, okay, to talk about, I mean, in other words, you want to you wanna calm people down. Even if you create a storm like Skyfall that we did, you want to, before you ever market like that, you want to put out a solution and you want to make sure that you can position yourself within that framework as a voice of reason if you discuss something like that. One of the big mistakes I see people making on social media and Twitter is the sky is falling and there's no solution or the sky is falling just because I want to freak everyone out without a real um, you know, solution, without a real story behind it. You always got to be really, really, you got to be really, really careful, by the way, in doing Skyfall kind of update thing like we did. Um, there's, there was huge conversations that when, uh, when you spin a story in that way, you have to take responsibility for the outcome and the fallout. But that, generally speaking, you want to create rapport with your audience. You want to have, you want to be the voice of reason, the person that they look to uh, for sanity, and that's the long-term sustainable model. Whereas the uh, negative type uh, spin generally has a pretty short shelf life, and you know people really just want to hear from you with that. So again, another thing I would say is that a lot of the communication message with the impact equation uh, will really help you get a sense of if you should or should not continue to put out your story. Uh, you know, with, with the impact equation, you're really, you're going to have a sense that if you're not sharing something useful, and you, here's, a, here's the best answer for Kurt. I really like the question. If you feel like you're setting up a blog post and communicating with your market just because you need to set up a blog post and communicate with your market, there's probably something a little bit wrong. You're going to want to go back and create story. You're going to want to look at what you have that's actually useful to say as if you're talking to your friend and then put that out there. Connect which product you want to say like oh by the way like here's some amazing information about back pain and oh by the way you know instead of just leading with your product the end you say you know here's a couple of solutions that I found out you know here's a free solution here's a uh, the product that I've decided is good for me you can do all that. Uh, this is so this is the uh, Facebook page Matt. Yeah. Um, you can see it two hours ago, just talking about recency. Um, go away. Two hours, they, they post all the time. You can see they're constantly uploading and pushing images through. Um, Karen Russell, I don't want to... No, this is, no this is really good, Dee. Um, I think probably with publishing, it would be good for us to go a little bit into... It. Would you give me a one if you wanted to discuss, if you'd be willing to discuss the impact equation, or a two if you would rather not? It wasn't created by me, but it is something that I use. Uh, we've actually enhanced it. Okay, so that would be okay. All right, let me think about the full impact equation. How to, I've never actually shared this in certification one before. And, uh, you know, but Matt and I are always mixing it up a little bit, depending upon what the needs are of the community. Okay. Uh, one thing I would say is that in our bookstore, themesinbookstore.com or amazon.com, you can just go directly. There is uh, the impact equation is an oldie but goodie, and also he wrote Trust Agents, which I felt was really really helpful. Um, if you were to see my library here, you would see that I have a lot of books, and I don't just read those books; I actually apply them in the real world pretty successfully. Um, 
at a certain point in your career, you begin to understand the nuance of the actual physical meaning of a lot of the ideas and whether they work or not. Um, so let me just find the, we'll pull up the impact equation here. I believe we covered it. Those of you who are in certification level two, I, I think we covered it. Did we cover it in the weaponized memes course? Was that where it was, Brian? You were there. Did we cover that in, the, you know, how to build a mind virus? Yes, yeah, sir, too. Yeah. Okay. That was uh, week three, I think, Russ. Okay. I'm just finding the... <laughs> There's so many courses happening right now that i got to remember, when you guys appear in more than one course, I have to remember you. <laughs> Okay. Just give it a second, man. I'm holding. I'm pulling it up. Okay, no worries. I'll just chat you a little bit about what Sarah's doing. Yeah, here please do. Broadcasting. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, um, the girls are using Facebook because it's simple, it's easy, and they're doing everything off their phone. The pictures, everything they're doing is through the phone. Their their iPhones or their Samsungs that they're using. Um, nothing complicated. They snap, they shoot, they post. That's all they're doing all day long. As the girls are cutting hair, they're snapping, shooting, posting and telling the woman they're beautiful. What happens? These girls get an ego boost, they're stoked, they look bug. All their friends comment, they say, Oh wow, awesome creativity. You <coughs> sorry, you got all the comments coming in. And and people are liking and sharing what they're doing. So as we're going through the story here, uh, you can see uh, experts in wedding, hair and makeup beauty, bridal packages. It's just, these are all the goals. There's a social proof time and time and time again. And they're driving this whole business through their mobile devices that they're using. Okay. So it's been quite an interesting uh, change for me working with Sarah because they're definitely one of those generations that are mobile savvy. They use the mobile for everything. Okay. So. They're posting all day long. This is this you can see eight hours. There's like a, a delay as things are happening. They they they're almost communicating in real time through Facebook with the audience. And they've got like 1,500 people in the town in Port Elizabeth. There's 1,500 people that like what they do in the area of about 100 miles. There's 1,500 people there, and the business is doing really well because of this constant communication, showing, talking, having fun, and that's all they're doing. They're just girls having fun. <laughs> that's what SAS is all about. And you can see the comments. They rock. Best in SA. Fantastic. Staff are awesome. Totally recommend it. They're getting five stars. And this is really, really good when people see this type of stuff. So when we come back to the one feed, this is what we're trying to do. We're just trying to take these messages that they have, but we want to push them out further than Facebook. We want to push them onto all the other platforms. And that's what we're trying to achieve through the one feed. It's broadcasting. It's, it's communicating, it's talking to your audience and saying, we the best, come to us. And when you do that, transactions happen. The whole point of you building your sites is to create transactions. Now, um, why do I have the... we had a really... You got a dress? Yeah, I do, but I was thinking, why, why do I have the girls just want to have fun by Cindy Lauper going through my head right now? <laughs> That's like a, a cult song that... <laughs> Because it's true. <laughs> <laughs> um, you guys, I have. Uh, maybe share the screen when you're done there, Matt. I'll share. Sure, I'll pass over to you now, Russ. Uh, Russell. Uh, let's make presenter, yeah? Okay, yeah. Okay. I really don't know which screen I have up. All right. It's gone. Okay, this is just a this is a little bit of a cliff note. It's on our wiki. Just wanted to make sure that you guys have a little bit something. This is speaking to Kurt. Impact create uh, impact equation. Very very good book. In terms of now, in, in week two, we actually break it down and explain to you how it works with the root dopamine conditions. Bottom line is, is the impact equals C time multiplied by reach, exposure, articulation, trust, and echo. Really, really good. It's the multiplication thing that you won't find properly uh, communicated in other marketing material, including the product launch formula and the rest. I think if people understood that contrast was a multiplier,
they would change the way that their, their business works. And it's not a small thing. This equation is very deceptively powerful uh, at first glance. So, so let me explain what I mean by that. Your distinction in a, in a massive signal-to-noise environment where there's so much uh, noise, noise, the noise-to-signal ratio is too high. There's too much noise out there. Contrast is the one thing that we have, been, that we have evolved evolutionarily to utilize to help survive in an environment where everybody's doing the same thing. And in this ubiquitous technology environment, uh, it's hard to sometimes get the distinction. If you look in internet marketing land, if you look at the various warrior forum products, if you just go to the shopping mall or to Walmart and look on the shelf at the 2,700 different kinds of jelly and jam you can purchase, right? So distinction is the weapon. And what's great that I want to make sure you guys know is that distinction or contrast is almost 100% your story. Now, it can be product. It can be the way that the product looks. It can be design, right? You guys know that. When you get into the higher echelons, design is a major factor in distinction. And, you know, for example, the, the front page of Fast Company this month is, can Google outsmart Apple? And the entire article is dealing with billions of dollars, and the distinction that Apple has provided is based on its design elements that Google is trying to overtake. So, again, contrast. The, the contrast distinction, even at the large-scale environment, is huge. But the main thing I want you to walk away with today, Kurt, and all of you, actually, is that contrast is a multiplier of these other things. And what happens is a lot of people, you know, we're talking about reach. When we're talking about the one feed to rule them all, we're talking about reach. Okay, and we're talking about a few other things too, like technical uh, impact, which indirectly affects reach. But the reach itself, okay, is a whole different kettle of fish. And it's not more important than the contrast. The contrast is a multiplier. This is huge. Yeah, Kurt's saying, makes sense. Never saw that before. Awesome. Yeah, Chris had it down. They spent a lot of time with this. Now, reach, now check this out. Reach is different than exposure. Okay. Reach is all about how far you can go. If you have enough money, you can get a lot of reach. Okay, but exposure in his uh, book is really talking about the frequency of publish. For us, it's FOP. So the reason I brought this up is because Kurt asked, um, you know, how much should you publish? Well, if you don't have contrast as a multiplier, again, this is everything that Matt and I have been teaching you on neuromarketing and content and distinction. If you don't have that, your reach and your exposure don't lead to anything. And you can spend a lot of money in reach and exposure, can't you? Hugely. Now, this is why so many people spend time on branding, right? Because branding does give you the element of initial impact. Okay, the environment, guys. Your articulation. How are you conveying yourself? How well-spoken are you? Are you carrying on too long about in your writing and kind of problems? I'm just, you know, confessing to you guys my own personal things I'm working on. It's like, get right to the point. Like, what are you saying? Like, try to get beyond the, uh, try to get beyond the mumbo jumbo. Can you guys still hear me? Tim said he was having a challenge. Yeah. You can still hear me? I dropped for a second, Russ. Am I here? Do I exist? Am I real? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, yes. Okay, cool. Uh, yes. So that's <laughs> so, so that's articulation, and that leads to trust. Now, here's a hugely important thing to what Kurt was saying. This is really, I got to tell you guys, for broadcasting, this is the most powerful equation that I've ever found. I'm going to be talking to Chris Broden on an interview. I'm going to be going over some of these ideas in terms of the socially activated web ring, and you guys will be invited to that if I can nail it down. Um, the the trust we talk about in week two, but the echo is really important in the create, it's emotional resonance. This is the one thing that if I can't, if I can't empathize with you, I'm not talking about sympathize. Like a lot of the internet marketing material out there really comes out as like sympathetic or like, oh, you poor loser who can't make a lot of money like I am and oh, you're being beat up by the gurus and we know how that's like, you know, that's not empathy. The thing that people don't understand is that social media, the way you position, the way that you communicate as a human being through your video which can increase sales and trust by literally orders of magnitude by a single video, whether you have the one feed set up or not. That emotional resonance, when somebody resonates with you, uh, there you can make a friend for life. Like we have people who resonated with us in as early as 2006. 
that are still paying those early prices for any silo builder, it seems, you know, because we build a rapport with them early on in that resonance. Okay. Give me a one if this uh, if the impact equation makes sense to you, and a two if you're not finding it uh, useful or different than anything else you've ever seen. Okay, everybody does find that. Now, do you understand why it's different than what you've seen before? I want you to understand this one thing. Take nothing else away from that book. You don't have to read it. Contrast is a multiplier. It's not an additional factor. Yes, thank you, Bill. Bill says multiply by zero if no contrast and, and divide your bank account by nothing. <laughs> it's a very... It's a very strange thing, and you guys, I'm a you know neuromarketer and a huge background, a massive library of direct experience and lots of sales, marketing, uh, and copywriting success in the tunes of millions of dollars at this point in my, my copywriting. And I didn't get that. Isn't that interesting? Okay, I'm always learning. I didn't get contrast as a multiplier. I got it from the perspective of neuroscience, but a simple formula for you guys to use. So this is why we started adapting Start With Why. You know, this is Simon Sinek stuff. We teach that at the live event. Uh, and this is why on when we're talking about, uh, when we're really talking, and I think I gave you guys the uh, Future Proof Empire app. You know, if you go to futureproofempire.com, that's some of the basic outlines of what Matt and myself and Sue Bell, everybody will be teaching you at the live event, how to take this impact equation but incorporate it into a cash machine. Okay. Now, Tim Edwards is asking, contrast equals differentiation from competitors. Yes. Yes, exactly. Sorry, Tim. If that's not clear, contact, contrast in, in Mother Nature can be a spider that's got a red giant marking on its back, and it acts as a warning or an attraction to a mate. And that, that red symbol can be a distinction for everything else out there. It, also, it can be used to game. It can be used to manipulate. So there is all these different trust factors. Contrast is one of these things is not like the other. Remember in Sesame Street? One of these things is not like... You guys remember that? N don't tell me you guys didn't watch Sesame Street. We couldn't forget that. I mean, I'm just saying that's what it is. They were teaching you contrast on Sesame Street by the time you were six. But what's weird is like when people roll out companies, they get all focused on the, on the product, but they don't tell the story, and they don't seem to understand that the story is where the contrast is different. So, uh, Tim, if you're sitting down uh, in, on your camera and talking about your hangover, if it's not you, your hangover um, met, uh, herb or whatever it is that you're doing, I took a look at your, for instance, one of your products, your hangover herb. The first thing that I'm doing as a multi-million dollar copywriter is I'm looking 100% to determine what it was kind of funny because my uh, Tim, when we looked at you know, you gave me some kind of information about your product. Um, I started asking myself, even though I didn't look deeply, I don't think I had a sales page, but like, what is it that about yours that's different than others? One of the first things that we do when we're looking at things is to find the unique position. Now, this was called the unique selling position in the past, right? You guys are familiar with that. Jay Abraham called it the unique, you know, uh, sales. Um, position. So this is the type of thing that you use that as a contrast. We over teach this for that very reason. And now you guys know why. Because I use the create method. I don't talk about it, but I use I use distinction times is one of the be the biggest secret formulas for successful and profitable broadcasting that I know. The challenge is if you don't have your buy button up, you don't have your silo structure up, you don't know what you're broadcasting, your impact regardless of how big your one feed setup is, is going to be too low. When you have this on the one feed, you are dangerous. You're dangerous to culture. You can actually change society if you understand this. It's really that powerful. And if you have a product to go along with it, oh, by the way, use my hangover medicine <laughs> yeah, because it doesn't contain blah, blah, blah. Uh, distinction can be what it does contain, what it doesn't contain, uh, how it's different. It's organic versus not organic. It's healthy versus not healthy. Trans fats, or it can you can use anything can pop out as a distinction or contrast on a product, a brand, or a story. Once you have that, uh, which should have become clear to you during the early phases of this week with Matt and myself, I mean of this uh, training, is the pain behind the pain, the question behind the question should answer that distinction, and you really should at that point just that story should be rolling off your lips. Give me a one if that's clear, guys. Just so a little feedback. All right, cool. I'm glad that was, I hope oh, somebody really got that. I'm glad that was helpful because I want you guys to have a massive impact, not just, not just on the search engines. <laughs> I want you guys to have a massive impact in your lives and in the lives of others because ultimately 
machines are hollow. There's, there's humans, garbage in, garbage out. Like some of the stuff happening right now with Skyfall is designed to incorporate more of the human aspect and weed out the garbage by the major search engines. I can't really blame them. I understand what's happening. If you have impact, this is exactly what Matt said at the beginning of this call. It's really, really important. It's not backlinking. Okay, and he said backlinking is rubbish. It is rubbish if it's hollow. But if you're backlinking and you have systems of auto, you know, that it's automatically coherently attracting, because the impact is so amazing, the story is so amazing, you're going to attract all the stuff that people who have to fake it until they make it with fake backlinking systems you know, are going to be working 10 times as hard for it. Because, and you're going to have more of a human story, a broadcast, a popular station. Uh, you're going to be the voice of reason in your market's mind. And what happens after about five years of becoming the voice of reason in your niche or market is you become one of, if not one of the, or the only viable option. Because at a certain point, when you're the voice of reason for somebody for more than three years, what Sue and Matt and I discovered is that it's really weird. There's a tipping point. There's Malcolm Gladwell's tipping point. It's really weird. It's like what happens, I think humans are like, wow, you've been the voice of reason or so, for so long, I think I might as well just start trusting you now. Like, it's good to see, it's like, it's good to see your face because right now the social media, like, you know, the search engine industry is mayhem. What does themes have to say about this, you know? To the point where you actually can call the changes before they even happen. And that's what being a, a voice of reason actually is. And so what your homework for this week is going to be to uh, set up the basic one feed if you haven't. I know those of you taking the certification level two course have already um, started to set that up. I do want you to set up your basic one feed for those of you who haven't uh, set up a one feed. Guys, give me a one if you've actually got the channels like YouTube and Facebook already set up for your one feed. Or two, if you do not have your any of the one feed set up. And it's completely fine if you don't. Okay, uh, <laughs> Brian's saying, I have it set up for advanced, but not basic. Okay, well, there should be somewhat stackable, but I can also see that. Um, and also, yeah, I, I also want, uh, my, on my side of the homework assignment, I think Matt uh, has a homework assignment for you as well, which is probably setting up your one feed. My homework assignment for you guys is I want next week for you to, to walk in with your clear C, your, your clear contrast on the impact, impact equations. You should already have that from your uh, week two, week three. You just want to make sure it's in your mind. You should be able to walk in front of a camera and or have your staff member or whoever you're hiring walk in front of the camera and hand them a script that clearly lays out your distinction. Hey, Matt, what is your homework uh, for the group? Is it to set, set this up? Yeah, it's just setting up the one feed, the basic version, because um, basically the, when you set up the basic one, when you come to do the advanced and take two, you just actually start bolting on more components okay. and you're connecting up more things. So it, okay. it builds on and moves forward. Um, yeah, guys, um, the, when you communicate, like Russell's just told us, it's great stuff. I learned some good things here, again, whenever Russell tells us about this stuff. When you broadcast and you put a good message out there and people read it, they accept it, what do they do? They repost it, they republish it, and that creates more and more backlinks. It starts moving around the web, and that you get the credit for all that coming back just by thinking and being real with your audience that you're speaking to. We should send every one and of you. We should send you guys a T-shirt that says "I am a link magnet." <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. That's exactly what it is. <laughs> so, the one feeds the mechanism. It's the device that actually helps you do it in a more efficient way. Because okay. you want to go repost yourself. So, the yeah. homework for this week is get the basic one, get your blog up, get your basic one feed set up and post and watch the effect and see how it moves around. I want to really see, I want you guys to start playing with that. Let's have fun with it and play and get it going because once okay. you get it going, it works. So, set up, it goes. so you have five minutes to set up the basic one feed, go. We're taking a break, we'll be back. You should be done when we're, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, Matt, thank you so much. I think we've really done a, we took a little turn on this one because Kurt had such a great question. Uh, yeah. But the homework assignment remains the same. Remember that broadcast, we were we over, we over extra emphasis on personal broadcasting on this webinar. Do feel free to see previous webinars where we do not emphasize that as much. We've got several really good ones walking you through this. Um, but I think you guys get the point, and we'll check in with you. Uh, you know where to reach us in the, um, <clears throat> in the uh, certification one Skype room. Uh, today, just a heads up for you guys, I'm going to go ahead and push out the the release, uh, just so you guys know, in the inner circle, 
Um, the, there's a there's a transparent release for the general public. It's less than four minutes. A conversation with Sue Bell and Jimmy about the uh, Skyfall update and what it really means. It, essentially, guys, it just means a serious enhancement of personal security and how you relate to the web through your browser and everything else. Uh, that's one of the major aspects. Also, it it has to do with uh, a few linking processes that we will expose to all you guys in the inner circle. But we also have a network empire, may, uh, basic members, uh, for, yeah, you know, coverage of this that reveals more than what we're revealing to the public on our public blog. Then, of course, we have our certification level training. Uh, to be honest, we'll, we're, we will still be getting our heads around the full impact at the certification level um, in terms of how we should address. We have to be diplomatic because the main things that are impacted um, with this update are uh, private blog networks, which politically, because we have a lot of friends and associates, we try to be very def diplomatic and, and careful uh, about how we handle that. And it's not like they're all going to be blasted out of the universe uh, right away. It's just that there are certain protocols that need to go in place. And since we don't teach private blog networks and we teach broadcasting, we're in a safer position. Um, just for you guys uh, to know, I want to emphasize for you guys, the only thing, in our, we spent several hours going through this, the only thing in our organization that changes, that has a major update, uh, at least one module update, is GSA software, which is something that's not a topic that we have generally taught before prior to Jimmy Kelly coming into our organization. We taught it because people were doing it anyways, and we wanted them to do it right. Now, there will be an updated module. If you have paid for or taken the GSA training course, um, you're gonna be able, we're going to be showing you an updated module and test on how you should properly be using GSA if you are. Uh, and if you're not, don't worry about it. You'll get all the exposure and best practices uh, leaking into the members area for the basic members and for you guys for the for the next uh, several weeks. So I just wanted to give you guys the update. All right. So we'll talk to you guys uh, uh, the next. Uh -huh, go ahead, Matt. Just one last thing, Russ. Um, yeah, guys. Um, the reason why I want you guys to get your one feet up this week is because uh, in week six we want to get some things indexed, and in week seven. I actually want to have you guys install the dashboard I built for you that actually monitors your social activity. So um, <clears throat> that's what's coming is by week seven and week eight, we're going to start, I've actually created a dashboard for Google Analytics for this, which will show you the feedback as you actually do your posting. So have fun, get it up, and um, in week eight, you'll be able to start seeing the, re the, the responses that are coming back through analytics with your, your one feed system. Excellent. Thank you so much, you guys, and we'll see you at the next uh, webinar, and we'll look forward to getting your homework assignments. Excellent. Thank you, guys. <coughs> Sorry, is a question here, Russ? Um, is it okay to make a whiteboard video? Okay, well, yeah, we can get into broadcasting. Matt, you don't have to stay for this if you don't want. I can get into some broadcasting basics if you want. Um, yeah, Tim, is it okay to make a whiteboard video that just repeats what the blog post says? Yes. Um, you can... The craziest, most successful video campaign I ever did was the worst. Was what I thought was the worst thing that I've ever did. It was called. It was before Rand Fiskin ever had his whiteboard Friday. I did a whiteboard shot on a flip cam in 2006 in a badly lit room that went viral. <laughs> and and <clears throat> what it was was simply talking about how the search engines are not really telling you the truth. And when you drill down to the last page on the search engine. The data that they say that's there doesn't really match the, what they tossed up in the database. Um, for some reason, it just was mind-opening. It was a, I shrunk the change for people. Shrinking the change is always the key, as the, the Heath brothers call it. So to answer your question, what I did in that blog post is you can install the video, and then you can, parif you can give bullet points. For some reason, I found that the bullet points method really seems to work. People do like to see uh, the bullet points, Tim, of what's in that. Okay. Uh, it's really, uh, oh, I guess Brian said that's how I opened OMG Live Talk. Yeah, I did. It's shrink, shrinking the change is always the most impactful thing. Anytime you guys can shrink change, I did go at OMG Live, I did show them that there's almost nothing. You know, they may say there's 23 million pages, but when you scroll to the bottom, there's like, you know, 80 worth indexing. It's really kind of, it still blows my mind, actually. Uh, <clears throat> when you shrink the change for people, you become a voice of reason. So, yes, but when it comes to the technical layout, go ahead and put your, your video in there. Um, I have been using transcription lately. I can't say that it's the most reader-friendly way to go. I've read some of the transcriptions that I posted lately for videos. What I find is that most people just re watch the video and they see the transcriptions there and they're like, wow, there's a transcription. So it makes the content look more flush. 
Uh, I don't know about transcription in terms of you know doing all your content like that, but it certainly works for the search engines and as long as you have a really compelling video. You can also use, when you say whiteboard, uh, there's a lot of software coming out to do those drawings, you know, the, like ever since they started doing it for the arts foundations and the rest, there's software out there that, you know, has a hand drawing the, those convert really, really well, as long as they're not too tacky. Uh, you know, I think everybody started to use them, so they've lost their novelty, but, you know, that is one aspect. Yeah, somebody's saying that they have a graphics VA do this. Yeah, yeah. If you have, but again, it really depends on what you're drawing. Like, you still have to tell your story. And let me just, uh, guys, if you haven't taken Tech Foundation two, Tim, when you do a whiteboard drawing, if it's not shrinking the change, it's not providing an impact, it's not providing contrast. Uh, you, even if you reach an exposure with it, um, I think articulation and contrast are very, very important for the whiteboard writing. Okay. Um, and remember that there is a pretty powerful substitute for uh, articulation, and that's resonance. So it's kind of weird. Like, there's clients that I've had that have no articulation at all, <laughs> but they're either good looking, you know, like, <clears throat> for instance, if you have a, uh, I'm trying to think of something that's an example. Okay, if you've got like somebody who's a, a gal who's made her own herbal formula, and she's maybe not that great on camera, or she kind of rambles on. But she's just so incredibly sweet and kind and caring and really care and, and really good at what she does. Uh, that's echo. She's gonna her emotional rev resonance will overwhelm her poor articulation, and people will still opt in. It's the whole model: people buy things and, and bookmark people and friend people that they know, like, and trust. Right. So Tim, the main thing to remember with a v graphics VA is that you're gonna a lot of the times take out. The emotional resonance. Anytime you digitize video, have you guys ever seen those YouTube videos? Hello, I am an automatic robot. I was canned in some <laughs> software on the Royers forum. Please buy my shit. Okay, that stuff. That is not. There's no emotional resonance. It doesn't develop trust. There's oftentimes very little articulation. Now they get exposure and reach because they've automated it, right? But there's not a lot of contrast. The contrast, if anything, is because it's so crappy. So please keep that in mind, that that stuff is black hat for the third layer. If you want to do stuff like that, put that away, away from your brand. Like brands that do that just damage themselves. Your video, <clears throat> the, the resonance part of your video for impact is huge. Like you're better with a flip cam or a Kodak cam and just being honest and poorly articulated than you are being well articulated with no emotional resonance in most industries. That's a huge key, guys. In most industries that are female markets, okay, and I'm, I'm also speaking to you, Tim, if you are doing the, the hangover herb and the rest, make sure that your resonance is there because you're um, in a market that is high. You know, when you're helping people get out of their pain, just tell them what you're doing. Don't over-articulate. Keep the emotional resonance. Your impact is going to be higher. Does that make sense, you guys? Okay. Yeah. All right. Anybody else have any other questions about types of videos? Because in my course, the video website, Silo Architecture course, I go over the 13 different kinds of videos that can be made. That is available inside the members area to each and every one of you. It's actually very, very good. I mean, that, that module where I talk about the 12 or 13 kinds of videos that you can make, and uh, you'll see when you look at them how they do or do not affect the impact equation. Get as high impact as you can, you guys. And art articulation and echo is really, really important. Because if you're doing exposure and reach without that, you're just kind of beating your drum. And beating your drum doesn't make sales necessarily. All right, you guys, that's great. Russell Wright, uh, Manta Cruz, I look forward to talk, um, seeing you guys on the Skype rooms. And I look forward to seeing your homework. I want to see some of these one feed set up. I can't wait to see some of your uh, contrast videos come through. And please do send me links so that I can see what you're selling so that I can see how you're presenting yourself, so that Matt and I can see your contrast with all this technology. All right, good. Thanks, guys. Bye. Thank you, guys. Cheers. Bye.